<clears throat> Sorry, you guys. I was having some technical issues. Waiting for Katrina to get back on. All right, so can you hear me? Yes. Good. So we back again, people. Hopefully this time, no interruptions. <laughs> so we were talking about um, getting into the question of the struggles of being a female in the military. Yes. And... Um, you were saying that sometimes you have to be a different person or a different way of being um, to get your point across, you know, with the authority or not wanting to be labeled as the mad black woman. Right. When all I'm doing is uh, what I'm supposed to do and tell you what I'm supposed to tell you. And unfortunately, it has been conditioned that way that women in authority or women who have power mm -hmm. that we become the mad black person or you know what issues do i have when all I, i'm getting into the assertive part of being who i am right and it has nothing to do with that at all right so one of the things that I learned, um, besides just being okay with me, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say not to take things personal. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is um, people don't know you, okay? And when people don't know you, they don't know, um, they don't know your passion. They don't know what drives you. They don't know your motivation. They don't know what gets you up every day to want to do what you do. Okay. So sometimes people will say things which is not your character, but they don't know you, right? So why let that affect you? I had to learn that for myself. I had to learn for me that you don't know me. You don't know me. So why take that personal when I know you don't know me? Mm. Wow. So with, um, how does that go? So one of the things <clears throat> that I know from an outside person looking in or being around a lot of military people mm -hmm. is a lot of them struggle with when they have to deploy. Okay. So I wouldn't say I struggled with deployment. I would say I struggled with the family dynamic. Okay. So um I'm I'll say that I'm in my second marriage. You know, me and my husband have been married for oh, Jesus, 13 and a half years. Mm -hmm. And he's he retired also. He was Navy. He did 26 years. So it was different. Even though he understood Navy, he understood the military, he understood we both retired at the same rank. We actually had the same job. 
um it's different though when it becomes the woman okay um my first marriage i deployed one time and uh the 20 year old she was two at the at the time but her 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 side her father's side of the family they were very supportive um my sister of course always been supportive so i always had that support system i never not had a support system okay the what i needed was just for me to be okay with it like they got this don't worry about it and not wanting my kids to not think I, I didn't want to be there for them but that goes back to my childhood that goes okay. back to things that i um feel that i needed when i was their age i didn't get it and i didn't want them to feel that way so there's okay. a lot of things that i did just to prove to them that i'm still a part of their life no matter where i'm at um i'm doing this for our future not just my future okay. so that was something that i um I, and i always let them know that you know it, it wasn't a thing where i gotta go because at any time i could have got out i could have retired but i needed them to understand what it meant for me to sacrifice certain things because when they grow up and they get their families and everything it's, it's going to come back around and how how do i not show them that so that they can see it can work no matter mm -hmm. where you at it can work out yes so that was one of the things that i really wanted you to touch on about the whole deployment thing now i have seen some who buy their kids any and everything because you know they're not there so mm -hmm. on their way of showing love was let me shower you with all of these things to um yeah. basically pacify you until i get back no ma'am no ma'am <laughs> let me tell you something between me and my husband we have five children okay, okay. um three of them well four of them are grown grown over 18 grown and then we have the 11 year old um we ain't doing that. You know, I do not, I, for my children, all my children, I am very transparent. I am not about to hide my past, my present, or my future. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. not going to hide that. I'm not going to hide who I used to be. Okay. With that, you know, I got to be transparent. There are certain things that I have to tell them, look, I got this car note over here. It has to get paid because when you get ready to go to junior high or middle school, high school, whatever, this is what you're going to want. But how you going to want that if I can't pay this car note? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have to have those quite frank, direct conversations with the children. My husband had to have those quite frank, straight to the point conversations. Now, I will say our children are a little more, I'm not going to say privileged. And uh, the things that I, I did, there's a lot of things I did not get in high school or middle school or whatever. I'm going to say, I know my children get them, but that's because I, the way I think of things, and a lot of people may disagree with this. But I don't believe in as soon as your child turns 18, they're out of the house, they're on their own. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in putting your child in debt and then they got to learn the same way, same way you had to learn in right. order to not stay in debt for the rest of your life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 42 years old and I'm retired. If I decide to work for anybody, <laughs> you best be sure it's going to be for Katrina D. Williams. Okay. Right. So with that, um, I got a 20 year old. She's in college. Um, things didn't work out with me and her father. Okay. But you know what? That support system never stopped. You know, I don't believe in, you know, the, uh, you with me, you ain't with him. No, we don't do that. 
okay um don't get me wrong my husband is daddy okay 24 7 he's been daddy for her since she's been five years old but there are things that she had to learn to accept and to be more responsible and accountable for and she's getting that at 20 okay mm -hmm. okay am i still paying for college absolutely do she have a car no heck no do she pay her car insurance heck no because i don't believe in why do we have to why do we why do our children have to go through the same mess that we probably went through at 18 19 because our parents wanted us to hurry up and move out no we're not doing that don't get me wrong you ain't gonna call me time out you need some money to go get your hair done and your nails done because you're probably gonna get your feelings hurt okay but when it comes to you getting the things that you need absolutely I'm not right. I'm not about to make my baby get no car no no car loan and she's still going to college. No, that's no. So no. That that's a good point. I, I just thought about some things. Um when we well my friend no, both years when I was at U of M, uh I got scholarship money, but not enough. Mm -hmm. And it was um you either get a job on campus to you know have money in your pocket mm -hmm. or just the essential of i need to go wash my clothes or do i you know ask my dad to come up here or get on the bus to go back home mm -hmm. to wash and then come back home you know it was a different dynamic and then i had a roommate who I could tell her parents were very involved mm -hmm. and it made college life easier yeah. where I don't have to worry about all this extra stuff. I got all this drama or, you know, we're trying mm -hmm. to get up on time, go to class. And then you're in a class where sometimes you're the only female. Sometimes you're the only black female. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you like, I went to school for four years and uh, I feel like I didn't learn nothing. What I learned in four years was in the introduction of what I'm about to what, go through. Exactly. And I'm like, wait a minute. I was in the elite class. <laughs> Why am I feeling like... What? I'm feeling a tax right now. What is really going on? <laughs> like, wait, wait, we need to reevaluate what elite means because okay. I'm right now like, okay, you have to decide and come with grips with, um, I won't even say privilege. I'm not going to even say that, but mm -hmm. you have to decide, do you want this degree or not? Right. Do you, um, Am I going to spend, literally, when it comes to math, oh, my God, let me tell you something. Let me sit up on this one. Now, I thought I knew some stuff. I thought I did. You of them? Got Honey. you a whole nother level. Listen, you either going to get it or you going to stay in counseling. Um, uh, listen, I need tutoring. Mm -hmm. And not be ashamed. There's nothing wrong with getting a tutor. Mm-hmm. Is a real realization that you need help. That's what it is, period. Mm -hmm. Because what I thought I learned in four years, I didn't know nothing. <laughs> really. And that was the, the whole just of things. Now, lucky for me, blessings for me, when school got out, I went to the bridge program. Shout out to the bridge program at U of M, mm -hmm. class of 96. <laughs> um, they taught us the basics of how to study. Because I thought I knew how to study. Right. Honey, no, I did not. Mm -hmm. um, learning how to study, learning how to um, skim through reading, where you would actually pick up the important things. Yep. Um, learning how to read multiple books at the same time. Look, I'm telling you, this graduate program, baby, one semester I had four books. Four, not four, four, five. So this is the thing that I say that some of these things have to be talked about because 
we feeling like we got it together. And really, when you go to really go get tested, when you go and say, even into the job interviews and all of these things, the things that I thought I knew, I did not know. Mm -hmm. And I had to take a, a look at myself and say, don't take it personal. Right. Learn from where you are and move forward. Move forward. Luckily, you know, I had people around me that were in the same boat. All of us came from different backgrounds. And mm -hmm. I, I can't take anything away from my U of M people that came and bridged with me. Uh, some of them I'm still friends with to this day, just like you. Mm -hmm. We motivate each other by the moves that we make whether it's the mistakes we've made, whether it's um, being triumphant over something. Mm -hmm. When we open up our mouth and talk, then I can decide for myself, do I want to go this route or not? Now, for me, I could have went military. I could have. I had the option. I, you know, I took the ASVAB test and all of that stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, um, at the time, my whole attitude towards somebody being over me and controlling me, I couldn't get past that. Mm. But all of the military thing is not just that. It's not. But I went the other way of saying, well, <clears throat> I'm going to see what the school thing is about and then we'll go from there. And then even in that, I didn't get a chance to graduate and it's all good. I still have great jobs, government, or other types of jobs because of, you know, what I have put in myself is uh, mm -hmm. crafting, like, administrative work, uh, computers, you know, all of those things. It's like, okay, every job needs stuff like this. Right. So, no, I didn't take the, the same road as some of my other friends, but right. guess what? I can still talk to them and be like, okay, I'm a glean from you of I want you to tell them um, your ranking is not like you was just um, low man on the total pile, honey. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. And when I kept seeing you elevate, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. When I seen you elevate, when I seen you take another promotion, when I seen you get another medal for this and that and all of these things, I'm out here somewhere i was like is she in the desert where in the world is she at and I, <laughs> I was like what see where i ain't never heard of this but it motivated me like i see somebody that looks like me mm -hmm. out here winning winning the military ain't about to just get no uh no title meant to anybody who don't deserve it mm -hmm. so kudos to you i was like let me see she about to retire. She to retire. I'm putting it out here. Every time she say something, I'm sharing it. All right. I'm sharing it. Because, again, I knew Katrina in high school. <laughs> so I do have a couple of, I have some shout outs. And that's only because, you know, I am a, I am a business owner of my own. Mm -hmm. Um somewhat kind of so i do sell pamper chef but i do believe in supporting other people um and that's because they have a dream just as well as i have a dream and why not support someone because you never know they may run into somebody who needs something that i have so i made my list right i'm gonna try to tag them all but mm, i made my list and of course um, I got to start with my, my number one top hitter, um, uh, my bestie, uh, Keisha Boyd, Jesus. I've know I met Keisha at a time in my life where, um, I was at a crossroad. I'm going to say that. Okay. And, um, honestly, she was like. It's, it's, we grew up in the Navy. I'm going to say that part. We kind of mm -hmm. grew up in the Navy. She got out. Um, she got out. She didn't retire. But we grew up in the Navy. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that is 
we became mothers, wives, um, sisters. We it, it, it was so many things we, that we became or where we become that um, it's like we know each other so well that if I'm mad, we'd be like, we don't care if you're mad at us. You better answer that phone. That's how we are, right? But she does. So I, ha I got a couple of lists. I'm going to say them out, and then I hope y'all can find them on Facebook. Okay. So we got Just Right Creations. That's by Keisha Boyd. And they do t-shirts and ornaments, stuff like that, you know, mementos. I have Montoya Graves. That's my uh, one of my soul sisters. Uh, she does t-shirts and um, anything that can do vinyl, she can do it. Look her up, Montoya Graves. My hair, baby, let me tell you what. Okay, Miss Ari got me. That's Natural Styles Salon. That is in Jacksonville, Florida, 904-804-7927. 904-804-7927. All right. Um, you got some hygiene products? You need your, your teeth done? Look up Kimberly Little. Her name is spelled backwards on Facebook. But she got a, oh, Jesus, I can't say this word because I know I'm a little country, right? H-Y-G-I-E-N-I-C-O-U-S-A.com. They got all the dental products that you can look for. My girl, Lachondria Royster. She know I probably said her name wrong, but she'll be okay. Yentech Photography, LLC. Check her out. I got a couple of pictures. She did, a, she did a, a bunch of photos. She did my daughter's senior prom. She did my retirement photos. Yentech Photos, or photography, I'm sorry. Pure Romance. I know you know about that Pure Romance, girl. I got something for you, too, girl. But look up my girl, Jamila and Talisa. I'll tag y'all on the post. Um... Got my homeboy, well, I ain't gonna say homeboy, my church member, Chris Courtenay. He does PT. His his belief is black fitness matters. So look him up for Team Re Renew You. And of course, you got your Mary Kay products. Um, I don't wear it a lot. I'm not a big makeup girl, but I do love lipstick. I can't go wrong with lipstick. Me mm -hmm. and lipstick, we like this, you know? Mm -hmm. So look up Kimberly, Kimberly Foster and Kimberly Noble. I will tag everybody. I will let everybody know who does what, but look them up. And then for me, Pamper Chef Queen. You can look me up. It is Katrina Williams dash Pamper Chef. So look me up. Um, I love to host parties. All of them are online, but that's what we do. We help each other out. We support each other. You know, we do shout outs. And there's nothing wrong with um, just letting somebody know, hey, I can't support you, but I may know somebody who can support you. So exactly. In that, I believe in paying it forward. You know, don't keep, don't, let's not keep it all to ourselves. You know, don't ask somebody to support you and then you're not willing to support them back. You know, reciprocate that. And um, it was a conversation I had with the young lady who did my hair. And, you know, I hear people always say, stop expecting you from someone else. I think that's an unfair statement. And I'm going to tell you why. Why not? Why would you expect me to give my 110% and then you only give me 50? Mm -hmm. So why not? If, if you know what I'm bringing is of value and I'm worthy of it. Why, mm -hmm. why can I expect that from you? That is, I, I, I think that we, we shouldn't always ex be expecting of every action that we do, uh -huh. but we should, we should be expecting of um, gratefulness. Right. Okay. So I, 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 that kind of bothered me over the past couple of weeks because I hear people say all the time, stop expecting you from someone else. Why not? 
Because if you, if, if you, if they could not give you what, what they're expecting from you, why are they expecting it from you? Wow. It's you know why 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 are you expecting that from me? why are you expecting me this way but then i can't expect that from you that's a, that's unfair so pay it forward so let me ask you this <clears throat> you're freshly retired and did you ever has it crossed your mind to um go into a place of actually not just teaching women, but teaching how to be successful in the military? First, I'm going to say this, okay? Um, we have five children. Four of them are girls. Um, I did not encourage neither one of them to come in the military. My reason is because between me and my husband, we got 49 years or more in the military and i feel that we sacrificed enough um for our children that's my own personal opinion if they chose to do it cool then i'm a, i'm a guide them point them in the right direction but um and my husband doesn't agree with me on this me i did not encourage my children to join the military um I am, I'm a servant. That's what I do. Um, like you said, I heard you say the other day, you connect people. That's what I am. I, I connect people. I get people. I may not have the direct resource, but I can get somebody that can help you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think that part of me, that serving of me is what, um, what I can do. What I want to do, um, maybe in the next two to five years, is I want to open a nonprofit um, adult education center. And the reason, you know, a lot of people ask, like, why adults? You know, why do we, you know, why not a, a children's center? But if you really look at it, most children, um, have difficulty or have literacy problems because their parents can't help them out mm. right so if you go to low-income housing areas you go to these areas where the school zones are c d and f 90 percent and i've been doing this research for about two years now 90 percent of those parents did not even finish middle school mm. okay and then it, it, so with that um of course i i encourage child education but if you if you think about giving the education to the adult and letting that adult pick up that habit that that child is going to pick up because all of the habits that we have they come from home before they go anywhere else, we pick up our habits from home. So if that adult learns to embrace that education, embrace that struggle, you know, I think I think that will take away from um, the a lot of struggles that children have, mainly with anger, mainly with being humble, mainly with being entitled, you know, mainly with the um i can't or mm -hmm. i'm trying no you do you know i i believe right. that about, i don't want to hear i can't i don't want to hear i'm trying i want to hear i do you know and, and when we when adults embrace that and adults take on that accountability to be able to say i know i can do this the child is going to have the same type of attitude so, exactly. Uh, do I believe in empowering women? Absolutely. You know, it, it, and it has like it doesn't have any color to it at all. But exactly, um, men need the same thing. 
because we have boys out here who have anger issues and their anger issues stem from um, not being held accountable at a younger age. That, that it, It's like you mentioned earlier where um, did I give my kids a whole bunch of stuff because I wasn't there to pacify them. That same thing applies when those kids get older and their parents were giving them stuff to pacify them instead of saying, you know what, no this we're not doing this you know and mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to catch ourselves we have to be the ones to say you know what am i going to have this child this person be a contributing member to society or be a delinquent to society what what, what am i trying to do here <clears throat> so me no i'm gonna hold you accountable me i'm gonna tell you right now i didn't have my daughter write a promising promissory note I need you to write it down. I need to know when I'm going to get my money back, um, when you're going to make your payments. And this is at 14 and 15 years old. Mm -hmm. I, I want my money back. Well, how you gonna, how you plan on paying me my money back when you ain't got no job? Oh, you going to wash the car? Oh, okay. Oh, you going to clean my closet off? Because, baby, we're going we gonna to get our money back, okay? So I believe in that. I believe in, you know, hold them accountable. You know, and that's not just, it, it, it's it's not just us women, you know. We we want women to value their worth, but when do we tell men to value their worth? Because it's some abusive, toxic ass women out there. To be honest with you, I think it's on um both levels, and I think I appreciate you know the upbringing you me know, on some levels with my parents because. My mom was a RN nurse for 20 years, 20 something years. So, and my dad, uh, until he was sick, um, he was the second person in command over a security company. Mm -hmm. And so it was, I saw success in my house. Right. And every level, even from preschool all the way up, my mom did not believe well, my parents did not believe in F's, D's, C's, none of that, and barely B's. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I got the conversation. Um, you could do better. Right. It's not even going to be you could. You are going to do better. You're going to do better. Or, or you're not going to. Um, I could. I think every. Um report card and to the point where I had to get uh, progress reports every week from my teachers because Miss Camila was good at <laughs> doing work but I was a goofball like I was so silly and I would you know I'll be talking during class making everybody you know laugh and yeah. all of this stuff but I would do my work and then after work it was like I'm bored so right. I had to, you know, I had to bring on um, one of the few kids that had to bring a progress report um, home every week. My teachers had to sign it and say X, Y, Z, uh, Camila did this, Camila did that to the point where my parents were very involved in my schooling right. to the point of if a teacher even thought, not even did, thought that they were going to call my house and say, you know, Miss Johnson is blah, blah, blah. My mom and them was up there. Right. And if you miss, had them miss something or they had to get out of the comfort of their home to come to school, no, best believe, baby, you about to get it. You about to get it. <laughs> you going to get you it. Know that. And it was, um, now that I look at it, it was accountability with my my teachers as well as my parents that they were very involved in my schooling. Mm -hmm. It showed later that I understand now as a grown up that my parents were um, very important in their mind for me to be successful. I can't do anything out here without an education. I can't do or further myself or be um, a productive a human being in society without having this 
No, right. my parents didn't give me the name brand things all the time. Kmart was my best friend, okay? I didn't get right. all of the Nikes and all that stuff. What? LA Gear was, listen, LA Gear was look my, at, look at yes, here. LA, LA Gear. Gear was the bomb. I didn't have all the name brand stuff. Baby, you can take all that stuff, but I, I bet I can beat you in the spelling bee. Right. I bet I can, uh, I'll test you. Right. What's, what's important? No, my, um, one of the things that, you know, I was like, ma, how, I got great grades in school. I ain't getting no new car. And he was like, um, you gonna pay a new car, uh, car note. <laughs> I said, uh, no. Um, my parents were, um, I want to say they were, I guess they were considered middle class or up there. However, my mom was like, I'm not spending all of this money on a name. Right. You'll understand that later. Like the values that I were, uh, was taught is like, I hear that come from you. Like, no, you're not go do what I asked you to do. Go be successful in whatever dreams that you're trying to achieve. Right. And I'm going to help you not have all the other stuff that comes with trying to achieve your dreams. Right. No, it is not easy. No, not, it's not a cakewalk. If I want to, um, I'm going to say shout outs to um, Philip Doty with his daughter. Look she, has been, she has been dancing. She was a kid. Yeah. Now she has an opportunity. She's, uh, I was looking like, wow. Yep. The investment that it takes, it takes money to do these things. Yep. No, she don't have to worry about a job. No, she don't have to worry about all of these other things. Focus on what you are trying to achieve. I got mm -hmm. the rest. I got the rest. Now she just had an audition the other day. I know what it's for, but I can't say it on here. Right. But it's something major. Right. You can tell that they um, put the time and the support into her and all she yeah. got to do is show up when audition time comes. Right. And then it's going to pay off on its own. So again, like I said, the camaraderie, even though we're not in the same state, even right. though I might not talk to you every day, just know I have watched you. And this is another reason we have to be supportive to each other. And I appreciate you putting out um, to these other people. Again, please like and share the video, both of them. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate what you stand for, even if you wasn't in the military. Right. I've seen, I knew things that were going on at home when we were um, in high school. To mm -hmm. see you overcome some of the things that some people don't make it out of. Some people don't get over it. And for you to um, be successful. I'm not no, going to say I'm over it. No, I... not, not to that point. But um, sometimes, oops, sometimes we take the struggles we had secretly. Mm -hmm. And it becomes our fuel to become who we are now. I was, yes, I, I can agree with that. But Sometimes if we wait too long to address them, we we find ourselves later in life, it comes back to us. Okay, so since we dancing around with this, mm -hmm. and we ain't we didn't really like dig into come, it. Di dig into it. So what were some of the things that I knew about in high school? that me and you kind of was like, okay, we can't talk about this, you know, with, cause they not going to understand. Um, so tell them okay, we basically didn't, we didn't really, what was going on. Like, so as I mentioned in the first video, um, I didn't go to the same school more than a year. Um, we moved around a lot. I was, I can tell you, I want to say I was 10 or 11, maybe 12. We moved 
22 times in one year. Um, I also mentioned that the resources that I needed at that time, they were not available. Um, I love my mom and my dad. Um, but I don't think they were equipped with certain things um, that that we needed growing up. And when I say we, I, me and my younger sister, Ebony, we had two different dads or whatever, but there were things that were not spoken of. Um, I didn't see my dad for seven years, not, not saying it was his fault, but I didn't see him for seven years. And along that time frame. Um, I'll say that there are things that happen. I am a victim of ch child molestation and I don't talk about it a lot or I did not talk about it a lot. My husband didn't even know until we had been married maybe four or five years. But um, what ended up happening was, you know, you put stuff in the back of your mind because if you hold on to it and you think about it too long, you get distracted. Right. You get distracted, you get depressed, and I did not want to have that feeling. And I say that because I saw that with my parents. I saw that those distractions keep you from not going to where you need to be, where you should be, where you're being led to. So I put it in the back of my mind. Um, and I, I guess I thought I left it there. Mm -hmm. And in 2014, I actually had a... Uh, sexual assault in the Navy. But this one wasn't the same because I had to, you know, throw them dukes up at them, you know. So, um, try epic fucking fail because I wasn't doing that again. But unfortunately, it brought back my childhood because what I could do at 30 something years old, I couldn't do. When you was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it came back like, why did you do this when you were that age? And all of that stuff came back. And it just brought up a lot of stuff. Can you can you hear yourself? I don't know what in the world is going on. 
uh, it's like as soon as we got into this topic, I know powers and bees don't be playing with me, but it was like you started um, really like low. You guys that are on, can you hear us fine? Can you guys hear? You guys can type in that you can hear us fine. Um, mine is just, it's like people pop up. It's like they're watching. Um, but I don't know. I need Trina, your mic went out low. That's what Keisha just said. Your mic went low. Yeah. Can you hear me now, Keisha? It's like it went muffled. And it's weird because it was fine until we started get into the, um, into this deep conversation. I can hear you, but you sound um, almost like muffled. I don't know why I ain't even got nothing in here. I don't know. Did you have on headphones? Mm -mm, I never had on any. That's weird. Welcome to technology. One moment we good, the next minute unplug your mic and put it back. She, I don't think she had one on, or did you? I got nothing in here. Mm -mm, I never had one on. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's not as clear as it was before. I don't know what's going on. But I just thought it was very ironic. As soon as we get into the conversation of what was going on at your home, then all of a sudden the audio parts start acting up. Right. You see my face? So th this is the part where we really going to help somebody. Right. Because um, this is why I'm a very big advocate on you always have to be nice to somebody because you have no idea what somebody has to go through on a daily basis. Have no idea. And even in, um, for whatever reason, um, in a black family, those things right there is not talked about. Oh, no. You you better keep whatever happens in your house to yourself. Right. Which is not helpful for no one. About it. Absolutely. You know, people don't want to admit. You know, when I first told my mom, um, she, I think for her, she didn't even realize why I stopped going over there. She didn't even try to, she never asked. She just, you know, I was like, I don't want to go over there anymore. You know, once you know, when we get to that age, you know, we're like, um, I can babysit myself. <laughs> that's that's mm -hmm. what I say. I'm like, no, I can stay at home. I don't want to go over there. You know, and I did that for a couple of years. The only reason I had started going back over there was because I became a teenager. I, me and Tyree started dating, and he stayed closer to the house. And the only time I went over there is when I knew Tyree was coming over. That was wow. Awesome. And he would and he would ask me like, "Why don't you go over there?" Thinking I had to tell him, you know, I don't like going over there because of the brother. And every you know, once I told him that, it was just like, well. Know, and then that's when it got to where um, I guess I became a, 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 I became bold about it, you know. When I turned 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
14 and 15 years old, you know, if that person came over there, I'll be like, don't say shit to me. You know, and you, you know how my mama was. My mama was real strict. You know, I'd be like, don't touch me. Don't say nothing to me. Stay away from me. I, be, I, I got real bold about it. And some of that was because I, I was ashamed of it, but I knew it was wrong. Right, right. You know, and even though, you know, and, and a, a, pedophiles most of the time think they, that, that the kids want it and make them feel good. <clears throat> and when you realize that, no, I don't want to feel like this. I, I'll tell you now, and my husband, when we first got together, he would get mad. He he be like, give me a kiss. I don't want to kiss you. Even and he'd be like, What do you mean? I'd be like, I don't want to kiss. But you know, I when I started doing that, that's when I told me. My counselor told me that's the reason why. Is because the the molester would make you kiss him and mm -hmm that was something that you saw as being bad and i'm gonna interject on this part i have i am a big most of the time i'm gonna help some of your parents out most of the time your first your child's first sexual encounter is with someone close to you hmm or it's somebody that you, you know, in, in, um, like say your neighbor's child, they're experimenting on your children. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. The people that you think are safe most of the time are the people that have been messing with your children. Mm -hmm. and then they grow up and thinking that ain't nothing wrong with it or they mm -hmm. become very sexual sexual um curious. addicts yeah mm -hmm. very curious because they're starting to feel like you already touched me you already been doing this and that now i want the real thing like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready my body mm -hmm. has actually been um advanced mm-hmm because you didn't already got my hormones going. Mm -hmm. Let me help y'all out. Mm -hmm. So now I I'm, have I'm sexually active. I have an 11 year old. And because of me experiencing certain things, you know, even when Desiree was, was younger, you know, people would ask could she come over could she spend a night and i'd be like no mm -mm. no um, and 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 when that happened i remember it was a young lady that stayed across from us in the cul-de-sac and um desiree was a couple of years older than her but they all played you know around with each other and she asked because she spent a night and i said desiree can stay over there you know, until about 10 or 11, but she got to come home. I was like, is your son, your son staying there for the night? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, no. Nope. Mm -mm. My baby got to come home. And, and you, you still got to be careful even with these girls. Come on, somebody. Oh, I, I, let, I, let, let me tell you. Let, let me tell you. Um, I'm not going to go into detail because somebody could probably figure it out. But there was an incident that happened. And in order to, in order to save relationships and save children, um, the people involved decided to handle the situation in house, but that came at a cost. Um, and that cost was, I'm not living in denial, right? right. I'm mm -hmm. not, and nobody that I know will live in denial. Okay. So, um, 
their the the relationship between the adults was gone yes i understand that mm -hmm. but and, and, but it wasn't it and it was funny because it wasn't because of like-mindedness you had three adults that knew something and one adult that was in denial mm -hmm. that one adult was an enabler and didn't want to come to terms with the fact that this this child over here needs help and, and with that um unfortunately that marriage that that marriage um did, didn't sit right after that because one parent was absolute was this is totally unacceptable what is going on mm. and uh, like i said the the crazy thing is looking back at some situations people that i know people you know the world sometimes ain't ready for the realness and this is why you have to say it because some of the most sexual encounters even at a young age was convenient they were right there they were right there and um depending on how your parents were were you able to talk about it or not and then it became a routine but was it but and i'm speaking out of experience was it that you couldn't talk about it or was it that the parent just wasn't emotionally available for you to talk about it um some things we we not ready for as an adult you're not ready to hear you know your your child tell you i think if left alone this man would probably rape me especially when you were at my age i was always developed always right. So my dad, um, my dad um, had to pull me to the side at a young age and say, mm -hmm. do not mm -hmm. for any reason be where you don't need to be. Right. There are people who were um, close to my neighbors who I knew were pedophiles because the way they looked at me, you ain't had to mm -hmm. say nothing, you know. Right you know you feel so, it so yeah so it's like yeah i'm not gonna be around you no when i see you come mm -hmm. in the door i'm leaving or mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like no you know and see, for us where the way we are we don't have too many people come over it's it's normally the same set of people right and that's because am i scared absolutely um yeah you don't want my, history to repeat itself right you know my anxiety kick in i get real i get the tingly spider I, mm -mm, somebody about to get the hot lead so no no right. no 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 right this this is when i say this is good because a lot of people don't know um and i i had to not only research this but i knew a lot of the things that happened you can pinpoint where the damage happened and then where your life the avenue of um promiscuous sex because now i have this i explained it like this once how do i say, once you get a taste whether it's good or bad follow me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your hormones like i want it again just like if you was addicted to drugs absolutely so therefore if without counseling without a conversation without the restrictions or limitations guess what i'm going to find that that hit again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether at one point whether it was a guy mm -hmm. or a girl 
because at kids we all played house and it was with girls as well as boys mm -hmm. so my first encounters with being with a girl was when I was a kid mm -hmm. my first encounters with a boy was when I was a kid and we think it's, you know, it's just a, you know, dry humping and all of that good stuff. No, that starts, you starting a fire. Yep. And then all of a sudden you, you get to the that, like, I remember uh, saying that to my daughter. I remember saying that to her when she was 17. We talked, we were talking about sex and, you know, she was like, I'm not blah, blah, blah. You know, she was having a fit because I was like, well, Desiree, you know, the conversation came up about kissing. And I said, Desiree, you don't kiss everybody because she had this one little friend. He always was like, why you, if you like me, you should be wanting to show me affection in front of oh, people. Jesus. I tell her, I'd be like, girl, you want not growing on your face. And if he so want to kiss you, he didn't kiss all them other ones too. Leave them alone. But when we got to talking about it, I said the same thing. I said, you know why I tell you don't kiss? And she was like, because of germs? I was like, no. No. I <laughs> kiss the feeling on you. I was like, and then your damn panties come off, girl. <laughs> and she was like, Ma. And I was like, But that's what happened. That happens. I said, You get to start it feeling good. I said, That's the reason why, you know, that's a that part of intimacy. You got to make sure it's with the right person, you yeah, know? Yeah, and don't start the fire. Mm -mm. Look, I showed, told her, I told, I told her that too. And she was just like, It's Ma. the truth. Mm -hmm. But we don't, we don't, as, as an, I guess an adults, you know, we we forget. I think parents get afraid that they forget that some of the things that you did when you were a kid, yeah, and look at you now. So yep. we don't want to take turns in. Well, you know, in the back room when nobody was looking, I was doing what I was doing, right? In a uh, when you was going to work and you know somebody was. Uh, babysitting uh yeah so the conversations um that are need to be had we don't have them until after the fact like i don't remember my mom tried to have the birds and the bees talk with me and i'm still like why is the birds and the bees how birds and bees have sex right i knew you know from people what they were talking about but i right. had no idea the correlation of the birds and the bees and then later on, I read maybe a month ago that they was talking about like mostly the reproduction part of it. The because in my mind at a young age, I'm thinking how a bird and a bee right get together because I'm confused. So they tried to have that conversation with me after I had sex. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, now I understand why, yeah, it was a little bit too late for that. So, mm -hmm. so the, the conversation is like, nowadays, because I know, you know, kindergartners, they, they starting off early in, you know, in the ba in the bathroom, hunching on each other. Um, we kissing, we dancing and humping and all this stuff you see on TV and, you know, kids watching porn and all of this stuff it's real don't but don't think your it, kids is not uh, acceptable to that stuff man and, Get out of here. And, you know i me and we had a conversation with our 11 year old and i had to tell her um we were just talk about it instead of someone else talking to her about it and um i told her you know, one day i told her i said you know um the things that you see on tv is not the way we live so don't believe that when you see it on tv and you see a man treating a woman a certain kind of way or 
their encounter with each other that you see as being intimate and that may be the way he, he loved her. Don't believe that. Ask TV girl. And I had to tell her that. And the reason was because of him. Listen, this conversation right here is a, a long one in itself. But what I want everybody to do is, of course, like and share the conversation. Um, I'm actually late for another interview. Another one. <laughs> yes. I, I'm, it's so good. I'll be like, oh, shoot, I'm late. But I have enjoyed this time with you, Katrina, more than you understand. But I want everybody, again, to like and share this conversation um let it go out here viral because these conversations these real conversations are needed um i will definitely um blessings to you on your road trip um blessings on your um your retirement blessings on um your own business um also blessings with your family and i will definitely have you on again when mm -hmm. we can really even go even deeper into the right. conversation that we're having we just that surface right there but um i appreciate the time because i know you got to pack and then um we would do this again again like i said like and share for those that she has put out information in here about their businesses please go support them um and this is what it's all about um keeping in real conversations as well as connecting one another to um because life is real and we need this so katrina <laughs> thank you and i will talk to you soon hopefully yeah. i'll see you when you get here yeah i gotta bring something to you all right all right all right all right <laughs> you were going on your honeymoon anyway when i came up there i think yeah probably i think so because yeah. you didn't been here like two twice i think two or three mm -hmm. times i've only been there once but i was there for like a week and a half yeah probably yeah because yeah. i think mm -hmm. i was gone or when i seen it you was already leaving when i was yeah. coming yeah something like that yeah. Yeah. so yeah we will definitely hook up when you get here all right hon. all right talk to you later talk to you later all right bye-bye